Hey guys, today's video is kind of a haul video basically. Um, you guys know I've been gone for like over three months. I hadn't made any videos or I'd made some but I just never posted them. And so over that time, I mean a lot of products have changed that I'm using and I've tried some new things and I have a lot of backlog stuff to show you. So I figured I would do kind of a haul video today which I haven't done haul videos really in a long time. So figured today's format would be sort of like a haul from a lot of different places just to show you some of the things that I've gotten recently and kind of catch you up on what's been going on. So um, I have a bag here full of stuff to talk about so let's just get started. Um, okay so the first thing you guys saw my empties video last week. Um, I have finished up pretty much all of the shampoos that I have that I use. You guys know I shampoo my hair seven days a week and on Wednesday and Sunday I use a different kind of shampoo and conditioner so that you know stuff doesn't build up over time and um, just to give my hair a chance to have some other kind of treatment versus the treatment that I do the majority of the week that kind of thing. I apologize now the mowers are outside The company that my apartment uses, they're dumber than a box of rocks. They have been here, I mean, it's its afternoon already. They get here at the crack of dawn, really early in the morning and start. They did leaf blowing first, and now they're coming around with the lawnmower so that they can spray, you know, the grass all over the place. The area right around my apartment, there's not even a thousand square feet of grass, and I swear to you, it will take him 45 minutes to mow on a, a commercial lawnmower. <laughs> the strip that's out there. These guys are like a waste. So I apologize now, there might be some noisy times. <laughs> so anyway, back to what I was saying, shampoo. So um, right now I'm just using like a sample bottle of shampoo, but I really am pretty much out of that kind of thing that I would normally be using for my Wednesdays and Sundays. So um, I went to Ulta and I wanted to try something new just for the heck of it and these were on clearance. This is the Organics Eczema and Sensitive Skin Formula Tearless Shampoo and Body Wash from Circle of Friends. So this is free of parabens, petroleum, sulfates, fragrance, and dye. Um, it looks like this. It really looks like it's, you know, more probably designed for kids more, but, you know, really good for anyone. I'm always hesitant about anything that is, you know, double duty, especially for women. Men can get away with it more, especially with short hair and that kind of stuff, but generally when something is shampoo and body wash, it usually means it's it's not going to be a great shampoo, just kind of in general. Um, although you can wash your body with a shampoo, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I'm generally hesitant of these kind of products, but considering I'm only going to be using it twice in a week anyway. Um, I figured what the heck and I am interested in it being for eczema and sensitive skin. Um, I suffer from psoriasis but you know psoriasis is just really one half a step away from eczema so what's the difference? And it does say that it contains vitamin A and E and soothing extracts of aloe vera, calendula, and chamomile. So what the heck right? And I kind of like that it's a pump. Um, just because I generally keep it in the corner of my shower and that will just be a convenient way to use it. So anyway, I will be trying this and um, I don't know how much I will tell you about it honestly because only using it twice a week it's really hard for me to um, see results most of the time from the product that I use twice a week. In most cases, in some cases it's very obvious especially if something is a really bad product so hopefully it won't be a really bad product, but if it turns out that it is, I will definitely let you guys know. The next thing is, are some Avon products um, that obviously I ordered from myself. <laughs> so if you're interested in these, my website is listed below, so feel free to go anytime and shop around. Um, I My foundation shade range is ginormous. When I'm pale, I am pretty darn pale. Uh, never the fairest of the fair, but you know, I'm, I get to the lighter shades. And 
I can go outside and be in the sun for an hour and in that hour's time jump up, you know, five to seven shade ranges. And when I'm really, really tan, I'm really, really tan. And um, it's interesting because we have a mall here that's one of those outdoor malls where access to all of the stores is outside. And so, like, if I go to the Sephora there, I can go and get color matched when I first get there. And then if it's a nice day, I can go walk around for an hour and then go back in and get color matched many shades darker. It really happens really fast for me. So, um, I don't tan very much because it's terrible for you, but, but, you know, just an afternoon at the park or going for a long walk, I like to go take um, walks a lot where I walk or run, walk, run, um, at least 10,000 steps. You know, I just set my pedometer and go until I hit 10,000 or more. And, um, you know, so that y you spend an hour or an hour and a half or whatever, you know, outside and I get a lot of color even with some sunscreen. So um, I really needed shades in between. I had light shades that were good for me for the winter time and I had some decent dark shades that were good for me for when I had some sun, but I need a lot of shades in between. And so um, they were having like a buy one get one sale or I don't know, decently uh, lower prices on a lot of the foundation lines and so I went ahead and picked up two. Um, one of the lines I have tried before, the other one I had not. So the first one I got is the Ideal Flawless Invisible Coverage Liquid Foundation and the other one I got is the Magix Cashmere Advanced Liquid Foundation and uh, the Cashmere, they both have SPF 15 so good to know. The cashmere I had not tried before. The Ideal Flawless is very popular. It's probably one of the most popular liquid foundations. And so that one I had tried before. And I bought them both in the same shade. Uh, it was kind of two shades up from the, the lightest shade that I had. Um, so I got them both in natural beige. And um, so let me just show you what they look like. The Ideal Flawless looks like this. And it has a pump. Okay. The Magix is um, kind of has the same or similar feel as a good BB cream, like that has coverage. <laughs> and um, it comes like this in like a squeezy tube. Okay. So, anyway, I've been using both of those. You guys have seen me with both of these on it at one time or another already. And um, I like both of them. The I Ideal Flawless is more coverage. The cashmere is, you know, less, this is a full coverage or a medium to full coverage. This is more like a, um, a good light to medium coverage. Probably a little bit buildable, but, you know, this is for days where you just don't want as much on your face. And this one is good for when you really want to cover up whatever you want to cover up. Another Avon product I will go ahead and show you the, um, this is the Wrapped in Velvet Eye Palette. There's actually two of these. One of them is cooler and one of them is warmer. This is the cooler one. I have both. This one is called Velvet Smoke. Uh, I will be showing you the other one as well, but um, this one I have really used. The other one I'm just starting to use. The other one I have on my eyes today. And so it's a little palette that looks like this, and it has four eye colors and then one sort of um, matte eyeliner. It's supposed to be an eyeliner. These are velvet finishes. These are metallic shimmery finishes. Um, the dark shade is matte, so if you, I did use it as a, a crease color a few times and it works pretty well for that. So um, if you really want like a matte color to put in the outer V, you can definitely use the darkest shade. But you basically have kind of a, you know, golden champagne color, a you know, light frosty blue color, kind of a taupey um, brown color, kind of a silvery color, and then the, the matte black. I have actually really enjoyed using these. The one thing I would say that I, I don't like is I don't like that the palette doesn't have a mirror on it, but it also isn't a super expensive palette either, so I think they could have put a mirror in it anyway, but um, regardless, I really like the shadows. What I will tell you is if you have super, super crepey eye 
lid skin, I probably would not use these because they are metallic, they are reflective. Um, you need to pat them on. They pat on better than blending. And just, just the way that they reflect light, um, they are going to accentuate the high points. And so if you have very crepey skin, it's going to really show that. I do not have crepey lids really yet. And, you know, it does kind of give me a hint of crepiness. So something to keep in mind, um, you know, you might want to intermingle these with, you know, some other kind of matte shades if you want. But I really love these shadows. I love the finish. They're very nicely pigmented. Um, they blend pretty well. My favorite combination was this gold with this brownie taupe in the crease. Um, the gold on the lid and under the brow bone. I did every combination possible with these just using two shadows, a combination of two shadows. So I really have tried the palette um, and I know how they all perform. The My least favorite colors I will say is the frosty blue. I think it it creased a little more than the other colors did and I'm just not a fan of blue you know it's probably my least favorite color out of all the colors in existence and um, this one with the kind of frosty finish uh, with that velvety shimmer metallic finish uh, wasn't really the most flattering color I think it probably would look really pretty on very dark skin tones but for me it just was my least favorite and it didn't perform as well as the other three colors. Uh, the matte eyeliner, I will say, um, I don't think performed very well as a liner. Although these can be used wet, you can foil these. I did not foil them. I, it probably would work better foiled. Um, but I was using, I just used it as a, an eyeshadow. I just used it as a crease shadow anyway. So I, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I didn't try foiling any of these, first of all, because the color payoff is beautiful without foiling it. Second of all, because I just have this weird thing where I don't really like my face to be wet. I mean, I will wash my face at night and that kind of thing, but I'm one of those people that I stand with the shower head behind me. I don't turn and face it. Uh, if I go swimming, the first thing I do when I come up out of the water is blow the water off my face. I just don't like the way it feels to have my face wet. So I avoid foiling, if at all possible, <laughs> on myself. I'll do it on other people, but just not on myself. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch these for you really quickly, just so you can see. Okay, so these are the four shadow colors. And you can even see on my finger that the um, the blue is a little more kind of powdery-ish or something. The finish is just not quite as nice as the other colors. Um, it's still pretty, but just not my favorite. And then there's the matte black. And just so you can see that they transfer really nicely, I'm just going to go ahead and do that for you, too. And you will see, like, hopefully you can see, they swatch really pretty as well. And a lot of times, you know, when you transfer from your fingers to your hand, you don't get as much product um, coming off the fingers. And obviously, these are really nicely pigmented. So, I really like these. I'm starting to use the warmer palette now. If you're interested in these, um, you know, like I said, check out the link to my website below. They're they're kind of like um. A, a limited supply sort of product so it's one of those when they're gone they're gone so if you like them don't wait get them get them now um, but stay you know keep your eyes peeled because I will be showing you uh, the the warm palette as soon as I do all of my color combinations with with two shadows you start getting into three and four shadows and possibilities are endless right so if you watched my empties video then you know that I basically used up my mascara and that I was trying a mascara that I've never tried before. It's, it's been around but I've never tried it. And it's the Wet n Wild Mega Impact Mascara. I got it in very black. It's number C148. And this is what the packaging looks like. Um, it says it's the longest, thickest lashes ever. Instantly lifts for drama. Dramatic impact. Eight times the impact. It says the revolutionary mascara formula provides extreme volume and length, contains a silicone complex that provides elasticity and flexibility, proven to enhance the natural lash up to eight times. This all-in-one formula is enriched with argan oil to permeate and condition each lash to promote healthy, strong hair while adding color and shine. Um, 
I'm not super duper excited about this. It is a very affordable mascara, so if you're, if, you know, money is an issue, it's like $3 and change, um, and I got it with a 30% coupon at CVS. I did get this at CVS. Um, it has a really big fat brush style wand, which I normally do like very much, just to give you an idea of how long or wide the brush might be. And um, typically I do like that very much. I am all, I always go for lengthening mascaras because I feel like um, that's what people are trying to get. They're trying to get nice long lashes and they spend all their time on volumizing mascara and then they constantly say they're disappointed and it's because the volume isn't really what they want. It's length that they really want. I always go for lengthening unless I'm experimenting with the volumizing <laughs> mascara for you guys. Um, this is just okay for me. It's it's a successfully average mascara. Um, I think I'm spoiled because of my Becoming mascara. It's That mascara is so good that I think I'm just like spoiled forever from now on. Um, I also like the Smashbox, what is it called, the Full Effects? I think is what it's called. If that's wrong, I'll insert an annotation. That's probably my holy grail right now because since Becoming, you can't buy that anymore. Um, this is a little bit flaky, which is probably because it's supposed to be volumizing mascara too, and volumizing mascara tends to get chunks. And so this so far has done it a little bit. I've only used it a handful of times so far, so I'm still, uh, you know, still figuring it out. It provides okay length, but it's not the most lengthening mascara I have ever tried. Um, I've not been curling my lashes, and my lashes have been keeping kind of their, you know, their length. Um, I haven't had any problems with it flaking, so that's good. And I also, so far, haven't had any problems with it running, you know, below the eyes. I have been putting it on my lower lash line and haven't had a problem so far with it running. I have not tested it in any kind of extreme situations. I haven't gone dancing with it on or, um, you know, been hanging out in the rain or anything like that so um but just for general use it's been good so far it's just an okay average mascara but I think the affordability of it uh is is really what's important um I think it's it does what it should do and it's affordable which we like and so that makes me say you know I, w I would tell people to to try it and buy it so there's that um from Ulta I tried one of these Jane multicolored cheek powders. This one is Peach Bouquet. These are a little bit pricey. Um, you know, I bought mine with like a coupon or some some kind of deal. I think I had a coupon, so I didn't pay full price for it. If you're buying it for the cool packaging, don't because this is just a little thing that um, it's, it's just a little piece of like paper that's taped together, looped in a circle and taped together, and you can't in order to use the palette, you can't have this on there anyway, so if you're just like, oh, I really like that packaging, if that's what's drawing you to it, save your money, because that's not a good enough reason to buy it in this case. Um, I was a little suspect about this. Uh, I, I really was kind of expecting not to like it. I was hoping to like it, but I was expecting not to. This one has a nice peachy color. You can see the flower imprint, and it's got like a uh, dark rosy color over here, and a light shade here, and a peachy shade here, and um, you know, some different shades of peach in different areas, so, uh, it's really pretty, and I think they had three different, um, color options, like two kind of peachy options, and a, well, a peachy option, a pinky option, and then a combo of the two kind of option, and, um, when you swatch this, it does swatch pretty powdery. So I think if somebody just swatched it and made their decision based on that, they would be like, ooh, um, this isn't going to be good. So I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera, but it is pretty powdery. And even probably swatching it on the hand, it swatches powdery. You can kind of see it got kind of chunky. But honestly, I, you know, I use a blush brush. This on the skin is actually really pretty. It, it is a little bit powdery, but it has really good pigmentation, and the color is really nice. And, um, no, you're not going to be able to see it, I don't think. Um, I actually really, really liked it. I wore it, like, all week and really enjoyed it. Can you see it there? 
Probably not. Lights are too bright today. Um, so I really like this. Like I said, they, it is expensive, so try to get it with a coupon or, um, you know, some kind of buy one, get one offer or something like that. But I've actually really liked liked it on the skin. It doesn't it doesn't look powdery. The pigmentation is really nice. The, it's lasted all day long. And, um, you know, I'm happy with it. So if you've kind of looked at those and kind of thought, mm, I don't know, they're worth giving a try. Just don't buy it just because you think the packaging looks neat. Okay, also at Ulta, I was looking around the um, new product displays, and Revlon had a really cool, you know, new product displays with some really nice looking lip glosses, and a pretty new eye palette, and um, on the ends there were holes for two of these total, so one on each end, and one of them was already empty, um, but in the other end was uh, one of the color bursts. Lip butters. This is the Revlon Color Burst lip, lip butters. The color is provocative, and they, there's no number on it. This is the first one I've ever seen that's not numbered. And if you can see, it is this beautiful purple color. And the eyeshadow palettes were, were kind of is kind of a purpley palette, um, so I think it's just kind of you know part of that part of that particular color line, seasonal color line. The lip glosses, they had a bunch, they had like, they only had like two shades left that I could really tell, but it looked like there were maybe three or four, I'm not positive. But it's this gorgeous, gorgeous, like lavendery purple color. And I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited because you guys know I, I like the lip butters, um, I've got them. And the first thing I wanted to do is I thought, oh my gosh, I, I need to get that home and compare it with um, number 60, which is Gumdrop. And Gumdrop looks like this, but it's actually kind of a purpley pink. Um, it, it is a pink, but it's, you know, it's very purple. It's a very light sort of, kind of lilac color. And I was so excited to try, you know, try out this new one. So here's, I'm going to put Gumdrop here so you can see it. Um, can you see that? Mm. You know, it's a nice light lilac color. Kind of, kind of sheer, but um, very pretty on the lips. So I was super excited to try this out, so I put it on my lips, and um, let me just show you. Oh, in the light, in the light here you can really see it's it's got a lot of glitter. I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but it's reflecting under my um, under my lights very strongly. But anyway, so I put this on my lips. Nothing. It's totally clear. Not only is it totally clear, but even the glitter that's in it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't even show up. It's showing up in this super, super, super bright light that I have right here. But that's not normal lighting. You're not going to be able to see this. I mean, it's just clear. I'm so mad. I'm so mad about this product. Mad, mad, mad. I do not like this at all. I'm very angry with Revlon. Um, and actually, I'm going to take this back because that's how much I don't like it. Um... <laughs> Okay, I don't care if Revlon, if they want to have a clear one of these. Um, I, I should have known because, you know, when I saw this, I thought, oh, it's it's a pretty sparkly silver, you know, packaging. It's just a fun, um, like a fun limited edition packaging. Cool. You know, awesome. I was excited about it. No, it's just like the rest. It shows you what the color is like. I think this is supposed to be clear. <laughs> um and it does have the glitter on it. You guys know that the packaging, you know, like this one is just kind of sheer and see-through because this color is one of the more sheer colors, but the ones that have glitter have glitter on the packaging and the ones that are a little more kind of a frostier finish are a little more frostier to see through. Well, I should have believed the packaging. I should have known that the packaging was going to tell me how it performed and wasn't just fun, you know, sort of limited edition packaging colors. So this is a fail. Um, this is going to get returned. I see no point in paying between seven and eight dollars for a clear product when I can get perfectly good lip balms for 99 cents or less. Um, I'm mad at them for being, you know, I mean talk about being a tease, teasing you with that gorgeous deep purple color and then that's not how it performs. Ugh, makes me so mad. I dislike this so much. I mean, 
on my dislike list, it's seriously, it's like sex trafficking and Obamacare are at the top, and then this product is right below them. So, Revlon Color Burst Lip Butter in Provocative. Skip it. It's just a clear. It's just clear. Skip it. Mine is being returned. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to show you, um, a lot of people have been talking about these uh, already. I've had mine for a while, but I took me a long time to get around to using them. These are the Revlon Color Burst Lacquer Balms. Um, I got two of them. I don't have any of the matte ones yet. Honestly, the truth is, I'm just, uh, I'm just not much of a matte girl these days. I'm kind of like a magpie. I love things that are shiny and glossy. So I haven't bought any of the matte ones. I don't know if I will or not. I'm, I'm curious to see how they perform on the lips, but I don't know if I'm curious enough to spend the money on them if they're not going to be probably my favorites. So I don't know if I'm going to get any of those or not. Um, I got mine at CVS. There's a lot more colors at Ulta than there are at CVS. My CVS always has a limited, you know, number of shades that they pick. So, um, anyway, it was, they were doing buy one, get one sale, and I had like a $5 off coupon too, so I got a really good deal for them. The lightest one is number 105. It's called Demure, and the darker one is number 115. It's called Whimsical. And um, I like these better than the balm stains because you guys know that I, what, I'm not really a fan of the balm stains. These have more pigmentation from what I can tell so far. This one is a little bit on the light side, um, but still better than the balm stains, stains, I think. And I will tell you that you need to be careful with these because this, they're twist up. And this thing twists like you just pick it up and I can feel it twisting. And I know one of these days it's going to get twisted somehow. I mean, like if you throw it in your makeup bag or something, it's going to get twisted and smashed up in the cap. So just be careful with them. This one is not quite as loose, so it might be a hit or miss thing or it might be a flaw with this one. I don't know, but anyway, just be careful. So this one is just an, a nice nude shade. Um, it's a really pretty pale peachy you know, color with some shine to it. It's really pretty. If you have very darkly pigmented lips, you're going to lose some of the color, um, but you'll, you know, you'll still get the shine, and it, and it will lighten your lip color quite a bit, but it's, the peachiness is not going to show through as well. So just a heads up for all, anybody who else, else is like me and has very naturally darkly pigmented lips. And um, here's the other one. It's just a pretty, you know, fuchsia pink. So I definitely like these better than the balm stains. So if you bought the balm stains and were disappointed, give these a try instead. They still have the same minty smell to them, so uh, which I'm not a huge fan of, honestly. I'm not a fan of, it reminds me of, you know, old chapsticks from like the 60s and 70s, the old waxy, these waxy chapsticks, they were all fragranced in a mint scent. So. Um, I think I got really bored with that when I was a kid, and so when I smell it now, I'm still just really bored with it. But a lot of people really like it, so they do all have that fragrance to them. But these are a win in my book. Get these. Don't get that provocative piece of junk <laughs> lip butter. Um, oh, I also wanted to tell you guys, because I did, you know, I've replaced my mascara and stuff, I wanted to know if you want to see an updated um, everyday makeup routine from me. So I'll probably do it like a get ready with me type video and just um, kind of show you what my updated everyday makeup routine is. So if you'd like to see that then make sure to click the thumbs up or make sure you comment below telling me that you'd like to see it. And um, that's all for this time. If you guys have any questions let me know or if there's any products you want to see let me know or if there's anything you want to see closer or swatched or something, I could do swatches on my blog. My blog is, you know, linked down below as well. I do have swatches of the the other palette. Um, if you want to see that now, I, I did swatch that one on my blog, so go check that out. Uh, link is below. If you can't wait to see it <laughs> in a video, you can see the swatches for the other palette up close on my blog. All right, well, it's good to be back, and um, I hope to hear from you. Let me know what's going on in your life, and um, 
you know, by commenting below. And if you're new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe. It's free. Just click the subscribe button, and that way you'll know the next time I load another video so we can get to know each other. See you next time. Bye.